That was kind of a, uh, and last week what I did was um, I gave you the names. Lazarus, his name means God has helped. Uh, he was a friend of God. Bethany, house of poverty. Wow. Um, we're going to get into that. House of poverty was the Mount of Olives. Mary, obstinance. She was stubborn. She wasn't married, but she wanted to be. How did I know that? Because she was always at the feet of Jesus. She was looking for a covering. Amen. Mary. Martha was a lady. She had a house. She was a mistress. She was married. Uh, she was, we know she was a married woman. Mistress, Hebrew word, 1404, uh, is a reference from Strong's number 1509, uh, meaning unfertile or unbarren. I mean, unfertile or barren. So she wasn't going to be producing fruit for Jesus Christ. Not, you know, serving like she was doing. She needed more table time, like Mary. She was more concerned about the tradition you know, rather than the substance that was sitting there. Uh, in John chapter 10, verse 22, I set the, the, uh, the context for you when uh, it was in the Feast of Dedication, which was the Festival of Lights. Jesus is the light of the world. Um, I told you it was around December 21st, 22nd, that actually uh, Gabriel announced to Mary that, you know, the seed was going to be implanted in her. Nine months later would probably be around uh, September 9-11 when Christ was uh, born. Feast of Tabernacles. In a fall feast, and we'll get into that later. Um, uh, it says that when Jesus left, he went to uh, Bethel Beret. This is where John was baptizing. So he went uh, on the other side of the Jordan. You're going to uh, see this when we read. Um, it's uh, Bethel Beret, where Jesus was baptized, is the passageway of the house. So he went to the eastern gate. That was the eastern gate where John was baptizing. That's where Adam was put out of the gate. If you want to know, right? That's where Adam left the garden that was eastward in Eden. That's what that is. Jerusalem is the garden that was eastward in Eden. That was the east gate. That was Lucifer's gate. Lucifer was there when Jesus was baptized. Because you remember when Jesus was baptized, God the Father said, This is my son in whom I am well pleased. He went immediately in the desert and Lucifer came to him and said, If thou be the son of God. Right? Well, wow. He must have been standing there watching Jesus be baptized. So here you go. Um, so Jesus, you know, the passageway back into the house. Uh, he went beyond the Jordan. That was on the wilderness side. Jordan means descending. Uh, he bowed. He stayed two days. I got into last week. You guys know you've been with me for a while. Two days represent a day is a thousand years and a thousand years is a day. Second Peter 3, 8, Psalms 90, verse 4. It's talking about the return of the Lord and when he's coming. Um, now, let's read. John chapter 12, and we're only going to go through a few verses, and then I'm going to start opening things up to you, which is like absolutely amazing. I'm going to show you in John chapter 12, I'm going to show you the crucifixion. The cross replays itself out while they're sitting down in this house, okay? Um, let's, uh, let's check out a few things real quick. This is good stuff. Now we'll get into... Uh, some food. Okay. Uh, John chapter 12, verse 1. I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to read to verse 11. I'm not going to stop, then I'm going to come back to it. And I'm going to start breaking it down for you. It says, Then, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which he had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, 
Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? You know, here we got the poor. And then he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and he had the bag and he bored uh, what was put in there. Then said Jesus, let her alone. Against this day of my burying has she kept this. For the poor always ye have with you, but, uh, but me you have not always. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also the dead to death, because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. So let me set the context for this for you really quick, which I thought was pretty interesting. That um, we see that uh, it was six days before the Passover uh, that Jesus came to Bethany. Bethany, you see, means the house of poverty. So where is he going to? The poor, right? Where is Bethany? Bethany is on the Mount of Olives. See it right there? Bethany, it's on the Mount of Olives. So you got the contrast between Mount Moriah and the Mount of Olives. Jesus spends most of his time on the Mount of Olives. That's where the poor is pretty, you know, so here's setting this. So the poor is on the Mount of Olives and the rich are over there on Mount Moriah, okay? So, um, but I want to show you something really quick. It says, um, it says, verse 2, there made him a supper. There they made him a supper and Martha served. Now what I thought pretty interesting is go to um, Luke, um, go to Luke is it Luke? Um, no, I'm sorry. Go to, um, I'm sorry, go to Mark 14, verse 3 through 8. Flip back to Mark real quick. Mark chapter 14. What I'm going to do is show you in, uh, in the other Gospels what's happening in this place. So in Mark, uh, in Mark chapter 14, verse 3, this is what we read. Now remember, over here, she's serving. It says, And being in Bethany, and the house of Simon the leper. So now, Martha is not only... When, when Jesus came to Martha's house, remember when he raised Lazarus from the dead, Martha was serving. Remember? This is a different house. Amen. Watch. It says, And being in Bethany, and the house of Simon the leper... As he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. It says, And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this a waste? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor, and they murmured. Now, I want you to go to Luke. Um, let me see real quick. Is it uh, Luke? Yeah, I'm. It's Luke ten thirty eight. That's it. <laughs> I wrote my notes all over the place. Go to uh, Luke 10.38. Thank you, uh, Charlene. Luke 10.38, it says, um, thank you. Now it came to pass, as they went, they entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house, and she and her sister called Mary which also sat at the feet of Jesus and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care? My sister has left me to serve all alone. So listen, here it is. Martha is serving at her own house. And then we come over here and we see that now she's also ser uh, serving in Simon the leper's house. You with me? I'm going to get this straight. 
What's that? So in John, she got her own house. In Luke chapter 10, verse 38, watch this. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. So this is Martha's house now. Where he, you know, this is he, and she's serving now. Now if you go back to John, we find out that in John chapter 12 it says, Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was raised from the dead, whom uh, he had raised from the dead. There he made a supper, and Martha served. It would appear that this is Martha's house, but it's not. I'm going to keep reading. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table. Then Mary took the ointment and anointed Jesus' feet. And um, then saith one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son. See that right there? Judas Iscariot, Simon's son. Now, go back to um, Mark 14. I know it's kind of confusing because I'm jumping you guys around. Uh, Mark 14, verse 3. Mary anoints Jesus' feet. And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper. So here it is. As he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster jaw. So Martha is actually serving. She's not only serving in her house, but she's serving in Simon the leper's house. I'm going to point out another thing to you. Hold that place, and if you go back, you'll find out that... Um, uh, in, verse, in John chapter 12, verse 4... Um, it says, Then saith one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son. Wow. They was in Simon's house. Simon was the leper. Judas Iscariot's father was a leper. You with me? Amen. Are y'all with me? They, Jesus is actually in Judas's father's house. Simon the leper. All of this is going to tie in in a minute. Um, so let me begin to just break this down. I wanted to show you first the picture that Martha is serving in Simon's house and she was serving in her house. She wasn't spending time with Jesus. That was the legit stuff. The other thing I wanted to tell you and show you was that Judas Iscariot's father was Simon the leper. You know, you have it in one gospel, you know, where it says Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, and in the other gospel... You know, uh, Mark lets us know it was, or in Luke 3, it, uh, I mean in Luke 10, 38, it shows us that, you know, uh, Lord, help me, that it, it was Simon's house that they was actually in this time. So it wasn't, the first time he goes at, raises Lazarus from the dead, he's at Martha's house, she's serving. Second time he comes in, six days before Passover, he goes to Simon the leper's house. And here it is, Martha's serving again. What are you doing serving? It ain't even your house. But what she's doing is she's being busy and not sitting at the master. So it shows you the heart of Martha. Okay? Oh, well, she's serving. Yeah, but she's not spending time with the Lord. So what I want to do is now begin to break this down to you. You ready? Oh, Father, help me. Struggling this morning. Okay. Um, first thing I come across. John chapter 12. We're going to stick right here and we're going to move down. And I'm going to start explaining it to you. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was raised from the dead, whom he had raised from the dead. So Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. First thing I want you to see, then Jesus came uh, six days before Passover. Six days before he comes. It'll be 6,000 years of man's history. You with me? Right? He goes to a place which is Bethany. He goes to the house of poverty. So Jesus is staying with those that are, look, not the rich that are over there on Mount Moriah. Not with the religious people and all of those who have money. But he's actually staying on Mount Moriah. And Moriah is where all of, here you got Simon the leper. You know the leper colony was separated. It's Mount Moriah 
Uriah. Here, this is where Jesus goes to the garden and he prays all the time. Jesus is always spending time with the poor. That's who he's spending time with. Because the ones on the other side, across the valley of Jehoshaphat, on Mount Moriah, the religious, they ain't going to receive him. In fact, they want to kill him. So then six days, it can be 6,000 years, before the Passover, just like in days until 1,000 years, he came to Bethany, which is um, uh, the house of poverty, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. It says, there they made him a supper. Um, um, let me just... Lord, help me, Father. Golly. Read from my notes. Maybe that'll go. I don't know why I'm struggling. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, this morning we came in. The Lord, the enemy just bombarded and, and even through worship, my brother was telling me how hard it was and just couldn't break through. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I rebuke the enemy. I rebuke the enemy in Jesus' name, Father. Lord, because the enemy doesn't want us to receive this. He doesn't want, to, want us to receive your word. That makes us fruitful for you, Father. So I bind the enemy right now in Jesus' name with the authority that you've given us. Whatever we bound on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose, uh, uh, Father, will be... Whatever we loose in heaven, Father, it will be loosed in the earth. So, Father, we ask right now that your spirit be loosed, that you bind the enemy in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. All right. Uh, Bethany is the house of poverty. Jesus came to the poor. Bethany is on the Mount of Olives, the place the poor and the lepers. It was uh, the, right across from Mount Moriah. And the valley that separated them was the valley of Jehoshaphat. These two mountains, Mount Moriah and the Mount of Olives, Olives one represents life. The other represents death. Right? Which one do you think represents life? The Mount of Olives. Amen. You would think Mount Moriah represented, you know, the life. That's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Mount of Olives is the tree of life. That's where he stayed. He's with the poor. They're receiving life, and the other side is receiving religion, tradition, death. Right? That's where they killed him. Okay. Um, poverty. Poverty, the, the, the word poverty just means the state of being poor or the lack of something. Amen. So that's what was going on. Just like you've seen these guys, he was meeting a need when he was feeding the people or buying the groceries. The full definition of poverty is the state of one who lacks. Now I'm going to tell you something. You could be physically, you know, rich or physically in poverty but spiritually rich. You understand? So it's, I'm not just talking one way. You can, you know, be in, in spiritual poverty right now. And that's what I think the Lord is trying to tell us. We need to be more at the table because we're living spiritually in poverty. Um, the full definition is of poverty, the state of one who lacks a usual or social acceptable amount of money or material. Someone who hasn't, you know, got what everybody else has got. Amen. Uh, the second is the renunciation as a member of a religious order of the right as an individual to own property. So, you know, if you don't have what everybody else has got, you know, you kind of look down on, you won't be accepted, you'll just be rejected because of, you know, supposedly your substance. Um, it also means, poverty means scarcity or death. Okay? It means scarcity or death. Um, and the last meaning of it, it means the debility due to malnutrition. Wow. Poverty means the debility due to malnutrition which causes a lack of fertility. This is the Webster's Dictionary. Okay? Which causes the lack of fertility. Wow! Martha! Mistress! Meaning unfertile or barren. She was living in poverty. Not only was she physically in poverty, because she was at Mount Moriah, I mean Mount of Olives, where the poor are. That's where Jesus was. 
She's actually even at a, a leper's house, serving in the leper's house. Now you can see why she's serving. He's a leper. He can't serve. Well, let me do it. Instead of being more concerned about sitting at Jesus' feet. Well, I've got a good concern to be serving at Simon the leper's house, which his Judas is his father. He had a flesh disease. Judas... Ascariot, which means Judith from Corinth, which means cities. And I'm going to break him down too. So she's got a good reason to be serving at Simon the leper's house. But really she doesn't. She needs to be sitting at the table. The second time she missed the table. Twice. Right? Watch this. It says, which causes the lack of fertility. Thank you, Father, for opening now. Man, the enemy tried to stop it. Listen, it, uh, which causes the lack of fertility. Poverty spiritually means, from the Bible, poverty spiritually, being spiritually in poverty, uh, it means decay. Revelations 2, verse 9. It means decay. You're dying. Decaying. If you're not eating spiritually like you're supposed to. Also, it means, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 through 3, it means spiritually immature. You're spiritually immature. You haven't had your, 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 uh, you haven't been exercised. Your faith hasn't been exercised. Spiritually immature, you're decaying, you're dying because you're not feeding yourself. You think you're alive and you're dead. That's what people are in the church. Amen. Amen. They're not feeding. Yes, brother. They think they're alive. They have little strength. Weak. Come on. The Christians today are very, very weak. They can't build you. Amen. Because they don't have the food. Yes. They know the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, but can't take you into the meat. Right. You can't do that unless you're in the Word. Amen. And if you're not in a place, it's pretty crazy because nowadays, you know, I just, I just heard that, you know, uh, you know, pastors are being thrown out of churches because they got too much meat. Amen. Other pastors are being thrown out to churches because they're not given enough meat. Amen. Amen. That's right. I just heard one was thrown at the church right here because he ain't feeding them. I got thrown out of church because I was feeding them too much. That's right. <laughs> Go ahead. That's all right. Go ahead. You understand? Yeah. They don't know what they want. That's right. That's the truth. It's a shame. And when you try to give them teaching you know like Paul I got to give you the milk again you can't receive the meat you're like kids children still in need of milk Hebrews chapter 6 1 Corinthians chapter 3 said the same thing exactly what I said before if, if Fred is feeding his son with with a spoon at his age something is wrong but why, do, why, do, why are they throwing pastors out? Well, they ain't feeding me. He's not feeding me no more. Well, you're supposed to be feeding yourself. Right. Amen. 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 You got a Bible, you can feed yourself. Amen. Wow, is that not messed up? Yes. You become self-feeders eventually. Hopefully, teachers or ministers are part of what it is that God has called you to be. We can see we can see the reason Christ was concerned about the poor. And if you remember, Christ told his disciples to feed the multitude. Remember the 5,000? Um, he always stayed with the poor. Because number one, they didn't have it, you know, physically. Jesus said, I don't have a house to live in, nor a place to lay my head. You know, he was always with the poor. But he was there meeting the need. He told the disciples, remember, check this out. Did he tell when the, he fed the 5,000? What did he say? You feed them. Did he say go to the Temple Institute? No. 
Tell all of them that are gathered up right here on the side of the mountain, the five plus thousand, probably about 15,000 they say with women and children, tell them to go back to the temple institution over there that was commanded by God. It was set up to feed the poor. Right. But they wasn't feeding them. Amen. Amen. What were they doing? They were eating it themselves. Right. Amen. No, the commission was, don't build another temple and feed the poor. Jesus said, you feed them. That's right. You buy the groceries. Right? Amen. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. It reminds me of Acts when they saw all that they had. They got it. Amen. So that they could feed the poor. Right? Um... In Luke chapter 10, here's my notes. <laughs> I should have just went from my notes. In Luke chapter 10, verse uh, 38, Martha is serving in her own house. Luke 10, 38. In Mark 14, verse 3 through 8, we see her serving at Simon the leper's house. No table time again. Wow. I knew it was there somewhere. Um, it says in verse 2, we read that there, uh, there they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat down at the table with him. Lazarus had an understanding. Lazarus had an understanding. Mary's sitting down. Lazarus sitting down. Where's Martha? Where's Martha? Right? Um, it says, uh, but Lazarus was one of them who sat down at the table. I hope uh, you'll be one of those that are sitting down at the table. Some of us need more table time than we do serving time. We've got a lot of people serving and not sitting down at the table. Table time. The most important. A place of eating physically and spiritually. As I am sitting here preparing this meal, I am sitting at the kitchen table. Literally, yesterday. I'm sitting at the kitchen table. What is the most important room in a woman's house? Kitchen. kitchen right? The men's room. <laughs> the men would be the bedroom, right? Uh, <laughs> Six days before the Passover. Right. Six days before the Passover, it's a time of communion with God. Right. The seventh day we rest. So at that time, she's supposed to be communing with God, regardless, because God said when he was commanded with... Um, with, with Moses, on the seventh day, with six days, you, you're going you're gonna to gather together, but on the seventh day, is the, you make it holy. Right, but what's happening, this is six days before the Passover. Six days before the Passover will be the seventh day, regardless if you back it up. Would bring us to the eight, would bring us to the eight, we'll get into it. <laughs> Listen, and he says, so the woman the, the, in, a, in a house, and that's where we're all brides, the most important room in a house is actually the kitchen. And we went over that. The gathering place. It's like a family room. I asked my wife this when I was sitting down there. I didn't tell her what I was doing, what I was going through, you know, what I was ministering on. I just asked her. And uh, I said, promise, what is the most important room in the house? Because we're building a house. What is the most important room, you know, in the house? And I, I, I know uh, Rebecca and Scott Pete, you know, and, and Jason and others and rebuilding this house. And she's setting it up for wrought iron cafe style cafe. That has to do with eating, you know, make it bigger, make it nicer, make it all open. And, you know, and I asked my wife, you know, what's the most important place to you in the house? This is what she said. Um, you know, the kitchen's the gathering place. I just wrote what she said. This is what she said. I didn't tell her what I was doing. I just asked her, because I'm building a house, baby, what's the most important room in this house to you? She said, the kitchen. You know, it's the gathering place. It's like the family room. You know, it's the special place. This is what she said. Um, uh, it's the place of communication where you talk to people, you know. It's a place where special meals are prepared. That's what they were preparing there. Amen. The High Holy Sabbath. There was a special meal. Yes. Would that be a picture of being able one comprehending the sacrifice and the other? That's the same question you asked Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, it is. You better believe it. it and then it says... Uh, so that's what she had said right there. She had said, it's uh, the place of communication. It's a place where special meals are prepared. And that's what was happening. And Martha wasn't sitting there feasting at it. Um, now, let's, uh, go to verse uh, 3. I'm going to break down verse 3 for you now. 
It says, Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with a hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Now, you're only getting one picture of one part of it here. Not only did she anoint his feet with the oil, but she broke the alabaster jar and poured it over his head. But you've got to catch that in Luke and in Mark. You've got to catch it in the other Gospels. So when you read, get it all so you'll understand, wow, did you ever hear that Judas Iscariot, that his father was a leper, and his name was Simon? You ever heard that before? I never. I found that out yesterday. The Lord showed him when I started going back, looking in the different Gospels. Wow. What he starts putting this picture together. This is, I'm telling you, what I'm about to show you is going to blow you away. Because what's happening right here is an exact repeat of what happens at the crucifixion. What do you mean? Well, it's kind of crazy. And I'm going to kind of start tying things in for you. It's kind of crazy Amen. that they at a man called Simon's house. Amen. And there was a man called Simon who carried the cross. Oh, wait. Wait. Because the precious jar, the alabaster jar, is about to be broken open and poured out. Wow. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Alabaster jar. It says, let me, because I, I broke it down. Then took Mary a pound of ointment, which was about 12 ounces of spikenard, very costly, and anointed his feet. So, spikenard. What is spikenard? Let's look at it. The makeup of spikenard. As a whole, wait, let me, I don't want to get that to you. Wait, let me go up. Spikenard in the Greek is taken from two Greek words. 3487 plus 4101. And that's how it is when you go to Hebrew Strong's Concordance. You look up Spikenard in, uh, in John chapter 12, verse 3. Spikenard, the, the number on side of it, it says 3487 plus 4101. So I didn't go to the breakdown of it and then broke it down from there. So the Hebrew Strong's gives you that this word is made up of two words. Watch this. So Spikenard, uh, it, it, from the Hebrew Hebrew Strong's 5373 from the Hebrew side, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the N-E-R-D, like nerd, okay? Uh, it's an aromatic ointment derived from the Hebrew 5216, which is Nira, N-E-R-A, meaning light. Spike nard is an aromatic ointment derived from a word meaning light. That word light is derived from the Hebrew Strong's 5948, which means like a furnace. She's pouring something out, an oil on him, that is a, an aromatic ointment meaning light, like a furnace. Now watch this. The Greek word 3487 is the word nardos. Spike nard, the Greek word made up of 3487 and 4101. First I took spike nard from the Hebrew. Now I'm giving it to you from where John chapter 12 is. From the Greek, these two words, it means nardo, nardos, which means the oil of the root. So this ointment is oil from a root. Amen. The Greek 4101 is pist pistos, meaning pure. So this ointment, this spike nor that she's pouring on him, if from the Greek is 3487, meaning it's the oil of the root and it's pure. This is him. She's pouring it on him. So the makeup of spikenard as a whole derived from the Hebrew and the Greek. 
is this. It's an aromatic ointment, the pure oil of the root, shining forth as a light, burning like a furnace. Wow. <laughs> you heard that? This is the makeup. So the makeup of spikenard as a whole means taken from the Hebrew and the Greek it's an aromatic ointment the pure oil of the root that word root goes back that word root right there actually goes back to from the offspring of the root of Jesse that root is the root of Jesse wow. David Amen. Ah! son Amen. that was the oil they poured on David the makeup of spike nard as a whole means remember spike nard as a whole this is representing Jesus Christ this is Jesus Gethsemane, the oil press, he is pressed in that the olive. That's who he is. This is him. The makeup of spike known as a whole means it's the it's an aromatic ointment, the pure oil of the root. And you could put of the stem of Jesse. Shining forth as a light burning like a furnace with me that was him but not only is he the oil but he's the alabaster jar too I'm glad you asked. <laughs> the ointment. Check this out. Man, golly. Judas was concerned about the oil being given to the poor. And the oil was being poured out already for the poor. <laughs> <laughs> this oil could have been sold. No, it can't. Because you can't buy Jesus. Amen. He was going to the olive press. He was going to one where a place a man was called Simon that was going to help him carry this cross. He was going where he was going to be poured out for the poor. Watch. Amazing. The ointment could have not been sold because with Jesus Christ, the ointment, the healing ointment, the balm of Gilead, can't be sold. It was free. Poured out for you and me. He was the spike nard. He is the aromatic ointment, the pure oil from the root of Jesse sh shining forth as a light and burning like a furnace. When I looked at the ointment, I broke down ointment and in the Hebrew Strong's the ointment in 3464 it it means myrrh. It means myrrh. Come on. And the word myrrh, 4669, in the Hebrew Strong's, myrrh, myrrh is actually a mixture of oil and wine. <laughs> oil and wine. And he poured oil and wine into his womb. You see, what's happening in the house the makeup or the breakdown of the spike nard the word ointment means myrrh and myrrh is 
oil and wine mixed together. Everything that's happening in the house, what Mary is doing, breaking the head off of the alabaster jar and pouring the oil all over Jesus is exactly what happened at the cross. Amen. Because they offered him oil and wine which makes gall. That's what they offered him. But you see, and it was used as a painkiller. But you see, what he was about to pour out, he wasn't just a painkiller, he was a pain healer. Amen. Amen. What was coming. And you see, the word alabaster jaw is the Greek word alabastros. I'm going to break this thing down for you. It is so crazy how what happened in that house, my God, is exactly what happened at that cross. Alabaster jaw from the Greek 211 means alabastros. It's a long necked flask, the top of which would be broken off to empty its continents. Now, Jesus is that alabaster jar. Amen. Because within him is the pure oil, the oil of the root. He's the lampstand. He's the light. He is the one that is burning like a furnace. You with me? In order for the oil to come out, there had to be a breaking off, a separation. The, the head had to be broken off. And Christ, when he was on the cross, for the first time in his life, his father, he feels the separation from him in his head. The father. Jesus said, my father, you know, is my head and Christ is the head of the church. And when God turned his head, he was separated. He broken off from God for the first time. He had to totally trust God to raise him from the dead. You realize that? First time. And when, they, when he was for the first time, he said, it is finished. And he broke it off. His separation between him and the Father. Well, that's when they pierced his side. Right? To check and see if he was dead. And the pure oil of the root ran out of his side. You with me? Watch this. The alabaster jar is the Greek 211, alabastros. It's a long neck flask, the top of which was broken off to, be em to empty its contents. Not only do we see this alabaster jar that's broken off, that Mary was the one that gave birth to Jesus Christ, we see another Mary at his feet pouring the oil on him. <laughs> it's lining up. It's lining up, right? Watch this. It's derived from the word 222, 222 in the Greek, which means Alexandria. So the alabaster is derived from Alexandria, where uh, it's derived from 222 and 223, which means uh, it's derived, it, alabaster jaw was taken from the Greek word Alexandria, okay? And 223, which is Alexandros, where we get the word Alexander, which is a defender of man, right? Um, maybe that doesn't ring a bell for you. So. The alabaster jaw is in the house, and it means, it means Alexander. The alabaster jaw is in the house with Jesus. He's in Simon's house. And the alabaster jaw actually is derived from the word Alexander, right? Isn't it kind of crazy that the one who is compelled to carry the cross is Simon, 
whose son is Alexander and Rufus. Wow. The play out of what's happening, the breaking of the oil jaw, everything that's going down inside of that house is exactly what happens. Watch when Jesus dies on the cross. Isn't it crazy? The place he dies also is where a head was removed and buried. <laughs> the alabaster had to be broken off, remember? And he, the head of Goliath, skull, Golgotha, he's at a place where a head has been broken off and separated. Right? <laughs> My Lord. Simon, Simon's name means a man hearing. Simon means hearing. Alexander means a man defending. And Rufus was a red-haired Christian from Rome. That's right. So, what's happening inside of this house, at Simon's house, even the names are there. A red-haired Christian from Rome, a man defending, a man of hearing, was compelled to carry the cross. This is all happening inside of this house while they're sitting down at the table and Martha is missing it because she's not spending time with him. Yes? You know, when a woman gives birth, the baby always comes at night to his home at first. And if he comes out at feet first, then it's free. So it's like, a, it's like everything you're talking about is the whole picture of what happened in the garden. Martha, the way you explain to Martha, she is pretty much not spending table time. Right. Just like Judas did, because he betrayed him. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Oh, and um, that's in Mark 15, if you want. Mark 15, verse 21. Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus. So here it is in Mark 15. Everything that's going down, you know, uh, in Simon the leper's house is actually going to happen up on, you know, Skull Mountain, where Christ is. Um, There was one more thing I wanted to share with you guys. Um, I thought it was pretty amazing. Um... I guess that's it. Uh, I'll tell, tell you this one thing. Um, this is, uh, let me keep reading. Verse 4, and we're done. It says, um, then, verse 3, then took Mary a pound of ointment, of spikenard, very costly. You can see why it's very costly now. And anointed the, actually the head, and I believe it ran down his head to his feet. And uh, wiped his feet with a hair I told you, what's going on with the hair? That's what it was. Why is she wiping her feet with her hair? I believe, personally, if we go back to Mark, uh, Mark 15, it says it was a red-haired Christian from Rome, a man defending, um, was uh, a man of hearing, was compelled to carry the cross. So here, in Simon's two sons named Alexander and Rufus, 
We have, we see Rufus with hair, we see Alexander, right? And we see Simon. And here we got the mention of hair. I believe Mary was red-haired. Watch. Then took Mary a pound of ointment, of spikenard, very costly ointment, um, the feet and, uh, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. Hair speaks of covering. Why was, when it says, Simon, a man of hearing, the son of Alexander, a man defending, and Rufus, a red-haired Christian for Rome, was compelled to carry the cross. Why? When you break their names down. Why was he red-haired? Why did they say red-haired Christian? Because hair is covering. Hair represents your covering. She's using her hair, wiping his feet. She's looking for a covering. You follow me? She's looking for a covering. So then took Mary. So everything that's played out at, on Mount Moriah at Golgotha is actually what happens inside of this room at Simon the leper's house, which is wow. It says, then saith one of the, it says, then took Mary a pound of ointment, of spikenard, very costly, an ointment at the, to the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. This is what Jesus did, the fragrance of what he's done for you and me. Um, then saith, and he's the pure oil. He was pressed in the garden. He's the olive tree, the oil of the root of the stem of Jesse, right? Then saith one of the disciples, listen to this, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son. So Judas Iscariot's father was a leper. Judas had a, had a, had a disease too, right? Um, he was actually at the house of his betrayer. That's what it was. Listen. He's in the house. He is in the house of the father of his betrayer. Jesus went to the father's house and he was betrayed by one of his own. We'll break it down. <laughs> he says, why was not this ointment? He says, then saith one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot. That means it wasn't his last name. He was from Corinth. It was a town in South Judah. So he was from Judah, the same place Jesus was from. Um, he says, what should betray him? Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence? Now, a pence is a day's wage. That's almost a year's wages, 300. Why 300 pence? 300 is a number of completion. Three is a number of completeness. Remember that was Gideon in the 300. Remember Abraham in 300. It's completeness. It was being done and fulfilled right there in that house. All of it had meaning. Mary understood it. Grabbed the whole of it. Said he is the anointed spike nard. He is the pure oil of the root of Jesse. He is the anointed one. He is the light. She knew what it was. That's what they used to burn in candles also. This oil was so precious. Spike nard was so precious. Judas knew and understood the cost of what it was. Why was it 30 pieces of silver? You know what's crazy? You get the Judas wanted to sell it for 300, right? That's when he made a deal to conspire to sell Jesus out. Then goes to the Passover and sells him out for 30 pieces. 330, 300 plus 30, that's 33, right? Jesus died, 33. You think it's not tied in? Oh my God, son. Watch. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which betrayed him. Why was this ointment sold? Why was it not sold for 300 pence? and given to the poor. 
It was, man. It wasn't sold, though. It was a free gift Jesus gave. It was Him. It was He Himself. He was the alabaster jaw. And He even said, listen, this is for my death, my burial. That's Because that's what it spoke of. And given to the poor. It was given to the poor. This, is, this He said, not that He cared for the poor, but because He was a thief and He had the bag and bear what was put therein. Wow, there's a lot today. It bears the bag all over the place. Then said Jesus, let her alone against this day of my burying. Has she kept this? He tells it point blank. The poor always you have with you, but me you don't have always. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only. Listen to this, and I'm ending now. It says, they came not only for Jesus' sake, but they might see Lazarus. Wow, they wanted to see a man who was helped. They wanted to see a man who was, was dead and was raised again. They want to see you. They want to see you. Because that's what you profess. You took upon the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So you died and you rose again, right? So let's see what happens when you die and you rise again. It says, Much of the people of the Jews therefore knew, verse 9, that he was there. They came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they may put Lazarus also to death. Oh, wow. So if you have died and been raised again in Jesus Christ, they're seeking to kill you. Why? Why are they seeking to kill you? Let's see the next verse. Because by that reason of Him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. It's because of your death, burial, and resurrection that you're going to lead others to the Lord. And that's why they want to kill you. Father, you are amazing, Lord. And Father, your food is good. Your food is amazing. And just like you said, Lord, if we search the Scriptures, all we're going to find is you. And Lord, today we found you. Father, we found you in Simon the leper's house. Father, we found you in the house of your betrayer, Judas, his father's house. And Lord, we, we found you in the alabaster jar that was broken off from the Father separated you were separated from the head so that your healing ointment father could be poured out for the poor Lord for those that are poor father I thank you for your word I thank you for your confirmation of your word just proving over and over that you are who you say you are and I pray today Lord that you would that you would pour your oil, Father, your spike nard, Lord, your oil, Father, that you, would, that you would pour it over us, Lord, so that, Lord, we can be like you, Father. Lord, so that, according to your word, that our makeup, Lord, can be um, an aromatic ointment, Father, the pure oil of the root from Jesse, shining forth as a light, Father, burning like a furnace. I pray that blessing upon everybody that's here today, Father, that that oil, Father, would run, Lord, from my head to our feet, Lord. I pray, Father, that we would spend time with you at your table so we can feast, Lord, on the bread of life. The manna, Father, that that heals, Father, the, our life-giving source, the food that we eat today, Father, which supplies us for tomorrow, Lord. Lord, we're eating the bread of two days. We're eating the Sabbath bread, Lord, that holds out for Saturday and Sunday, Lord. We're eating the bread of two days. Father, don't let us never betray you, Lord. Lord, I pray that as we go forth, Lord, that you would open uh, 
and you would show the people that's here today, including myself and those that are not here, and we need to tell those, show us who it is that we need to pour the oil on, Father. Show us, Lord, whether it be at the grocery store, or down the street, or around the corner, or somebody in the family. Lord, let us pour it out on somebody who needs it, Father. You are our blessing, Father. You are our blessing. I pray, Yeshua, and His spike nard over all of you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen.